so this this story is out of control. Um, so I know everyone's talking about the, you know, the eviction moratorium, this whole thing of this letting people out loose in the streets in the middle of a pandemic that seems to be happening right now. Um, so I, I think people think this is going to be nothing's going to come out of that. Everyone's going to be smiling. This is going to be no violence. It's not going to be any kind of desperate people doing crazy ass shit. I guess people assume people are just going to go out in the streets and die. I guess that's what people thought about these genius. But actually, it's causing some serious, crazy problems. And I hope this is not a harbinger of things to come, uh, particularly in one town. Uh, you, uh, we do stories you always here. Here in Black Power Manager, we always kind of bash Alabama and Mississippi, um, rightfully so. Uh, but we're going to talk about the states that people don't usually talk about, which is like. Well, I don't bash the state. I bash the politicians in that state. And, okay, maybe some of the wackos. <laughs> maybe, 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 just, maybe some of them. ran a huge rant about Florida Man. Last oh, well, well, I mean, you know, Florida Man <laughs> is Florida Man. Okay. Uh, there's nothing that you can do about that. And unfortunately, Florida man uh, is in the governor's office as well. So he, he just hired another Florida man to be surgeon general. He, is he, he even found, a surgeon? No, he, he hung out with the doctor who talked about demon sperm. Um, so that's that's who's in charge of public health in Florida right now. So yeah, I'll be in Florida next month. And I'm <laughs> like, let me let me tell you something. Right. I'm getting off the plane into an uber getting right on the cruise ship when the cruise comes back to miami i'm immediately hopping in an uber and back to the airport getting the entire fuck out of there as soon as possible so this this is a so we're going to talk about maine here maine has this crazy story and um Bito ford shooting victim was landlord in process of eviction suspect so a suspect so pretty much someone shot their landlord trying to evict them. That's, that's just the sum of it. So um, he turned his landlord into Poland Spring? <laughs> Poland Spring, what it means to be from Maine. So, so the victim was in process of evicting the suspect from his apartment. So that's what was happening pretty much. Uh, Douglas, 31, was shot and killed on the porch of an apartment building around 3 p.m. And then Hennessy, his last name is Hennessy, um, has been charged with the murder um, of Douglas. He allegedly fled the scene after shooting, and I guess they found him in New Hampshire by the U.S. Marshals. Um, so this is crazy. People are literally becoming... Um, so now they're having a raffle event um, for and a, and a GoFundMe page for the landlord. So Oh, wow. <laughs> like, you can't even, like, just donate. You have to, like, have a chance to win something. <laughs> I, I, I guess the landlord probably was not very well liked. I'm, I'm assuming. If you gotta win something, the, the give him money. <laughs> so, so. Uh, I'm wondering now, like, uh, because you know, uh, the first thing some of us are gonna probably want to know is, uh, what race was the guy that shot him? <laughs> I mean, I mean please don't name, let him be black. I mean, last name Hennessy with C. It's it, all, all balls in the air right now. So we're gonna. Well, I mean, they do have like a, an exotic car company with the with the name Hennessy on it. So you know, I don't know, man. Please don't let it be the only black guy living in Maine <laughs> who got who got evicted. I mean, who would have known? <laughs> I mean, all those motorcycles and the pickup truck. And there's a MAGA truck there. You are taking care of that building, that landlord. That would seem like a palace. Damn. Whoa. Multiple times? That is... That's rapper level animosity. Yeah, that is not a nice thing to do to somebody. Okay, he's white. 
sorry. <laughs> See I'm those sorry. motorcycles in front of it, dude? Come on, man. What do you think is happening here? The community is already coming together, and there is a motorcycle ride planned for Doug on Sunday, the 26th. Live in Bitterford, Jackie Mundry. I mean, Doug didn't have any money because obviously they need to raise money for posts. Sorry about that. They have to raise I, I really. I'm sorry, folks. I, I, I don't want to come off as like this overtly, blatantly racist guy, but we, we, as black people, we just couldn't take another hit to our public image. We couldn't have the, the one of the only seven black people living in Maine be shooting up their landlord. We, we couldn't have that. And getting, getting evicted and busting it off. Like, like he's fucking DMX or some shit. Like, I, 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 I couldn't. I don't. I don't think I would be able to uh, walk the streets with my head held high, uh, oh. knowing that one of the seven black people in all of Maine uh, was busting a gun off at the landlord during an eviction. Rolling Springs. Uh, yeah, turn, 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 turning his chest and his head into Poland Springs. What it means to be from Maine. So, so that report was from September sixteenth, seventeenth. Um, um, so that was a that was a tenant shooting at their landlord. But this is not foreign Maine. This is actually a, a, a line of incidents. The incident before that happened of a landlord shooting at the tenants and the, and the police not really investigating it. Um, so, so, so we're gonna pull up here. Um, mothers of shooting victims get another chance in lawsuit against Bedford police. So this is the other side of the spectrum where the, where the landlord is getting like a whole raffle ticket, motorcycle, Chevy pickup truck, like a rock fundraiser. Two tenants were murdered by their landlord. And, um, and, the, and the, the police were like, oh, no, they were getting evicted anyway. So um, they just got evicted off this earth. Yeah, so that's pretty much what happened. So a federal appeals court has revived a lawsuit that was filed against the Bedford police after a landlord shot and killed two tenants minutes after officers left the scene. Thought they were genius. So did they, did they say it was all right for him to shoot? Yo, the cop, the cop? Yo, yo, dude, I was about to say <laughs> that. I was just like, yo, yo, the cops are like, listen, son, shoot these motherfuckers, but wait till we leave. <laughs> And then the tenants are like, our protection is just, like, going away. And, okay, there they go. Yeah, let, this boo, is, boo, this is, boo! Yo, this is the nightmarish level of, like, tenant rights being stripped away. Literally. We are not even uh, talking about it, tenants' rights. We're talking <laughs> about... We're, we're talking about something else entirely. Like, you can't evict me from my body. <laughs> So a judge in the U.S. District Court in Maine decided last year that the officers should not held civilly liable for the deaths because it did not greatly increase the risk of danger to the victims that day. Um, what? Um, I thought you're supposed to protect people. Um, nah, they protect property. And, and the class of people that own property. So this is a blame. This is a nightmarish story that really shows how the police are like on the side of property and not on the side of human lives um sue and jocelyn have been waiting patiently for their day these are mothers um the mothers of the victims um so we're gonna scroll down and talk about this um but in the city's lawyer said he felt confident that the Bitterford could win a dismissal a second time so the city is like you know we're, we're confident that these people are going to be dead and nothing's going to happen about it um so it's unfortunate that this tragic incident has, has to be prolonged, but it remains very clear that the individual officer, as well as the department and chief, should not be held liable. <laughs> well, I don't know about the chief being held liable, but the officers and the department should. So th this is when, uh, this is a trigger warning because they have the pictures of the people. It doesn't look like these are human beings They're actually showing you the pictures. So what happened was, um, James Where... Pat <laughs> yeah. oh, Oh, you want to read that? They never. <laughs> you want to read it from the top. <laughs> yeah. Derek Thompson called the police on December 29, 2020. 
2012 to report that his landlord was making threats against the tenants. Officers came to the apartment building and spoke with Pac, but they never asked Pac if he had a gun, and they left when they decided the dispute was a civil matter. Within minutes, Pac entered the apartment with a gun and shot the three residents. Like, what the fuck do we need you for? <laughs> Like, like, cause all right. So if Messiah wrote this movie, yeah. the office would have been like, uh, so, uh, you got your gun, you got your gat. Uh, yeah. Um, is it loaded? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, fully loaded clip in. I got one in the chamber. All right, sir. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> this is so dark. And Nothing to see here. So he murders. A 19 year old and an 18 year old and shot the mother who survived the attack this is this is crazy um he's serving a life sentence the landlord is is 83 and, he, and he's still locked him up so uh, for like the next uh, but, but like I, if but, i threatened if i threatened you yeah without actually having a gun i'm going to jail <laughs> but the officers here pretty much asked if he didn't have a gun and they left that's what happened here this is the laziest yeah, they didn't ask him because he was like, uh, sorry, are you okay? Because uh, you're in the uh, the landowner class, so we're here for your best interest. Are you are you feeling good uh, on this on this uh, blessed day? I mean, you know, it, it's okay because, you know, we don't we don't really need these teens on the planet. I mean, and yo, like, I, I, I'm not even going front. I expected that the kids that he blew away. I expected them to be black. No, it's, I'm not even. I'm not even going it's, front. Look how, look how innocent these people are. They're, they're teenagers that who got their first apartment or something. Who knows what the story is? But obviously, they just started their lives. They're 19, 18 years old, and, they, and they've been gone for the past nine years because of this old ass man. And so yo, we, let, let, let's talk. Let's talk about the 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 900 pound elephant in, in uh, you know in the room, okay? If a 70-something-year-old man claims he's going to do something, expect that motherfucker to do it. You got nothing that should be your expectation. <laughs> you only got to... Yeah, he's going to... You think he's got nothing to live for at that point. But I also want to... I also want to point out that... Two of these I wonder what sentence he got for double murder and attempted life. murder. He got life. Just he straight life? life? I mean, he's 83 years old. The life sentence is like 10 years. Life yeah, he, I think I think he just wanted an easier end to life anyway. I don't want to be a landlord anymore. I don't even want to be responsible for the upkeep of this house. You know what? I'm gonna blow these children away. So, so this this actually digs into even a deeper problem in Maine. Um, a district judge, John Levy, dismissed the case in April 2020. This was the first time they tried to put the case to blame the officers. Seven months later, in November 2020. The First Circuit issued a pain in another case for Maine. A woman sued the Maine State Police for failing to protect her from a former boyfriend who went on a shoot, shooting spree, shooting rampage after she reported he raped her. Um, the lower court decided qualified immunity to protect the troopers from her lawsuit. So these cops obviously don't help nobody. For anything. All right, so I, I'm going to just come out here and say it, okay? <laughs> I'm just going to come out here and say this, yeah, okay? Yeah. If you respond to a report of rape and do nothing, you are not qualified for your job. Therefore, you are not qualified for quali qualified immunity. You're not even qualified to be in uniform. You didn't even do anything. What you did qualified immunity against one. We're not even talking about uh we're not even talking about a situation where, you know, a man said hello to a woman on the street and she's claiming she's been assaulted. No. He raped this woman. And, and your response was to do nothing? <laughs> your response was to do nothing. He was like, all right, I can rape her. I'm You're not qualified for your job, and immunity should not, should not apply. So, and, and I want to point out right away, again, that these are all, the victims of these, of these incidents are all white people. Um, so this shows you the police, the policing, so that should blow your mind. And the perpetrators, this, too. Exactly. So this just show you this example of actually just policing by itself without the racial element. We always talk right. about. It shows you how they pick the landlord right away. The landlord, you know, the police, 
the gun. There's no gun here. They made all these active choices in these, right. in these cases. Um, you know, you make a really good point, Messiah, because from our vantage point, from where we are and from what we've seen in life, our default is policing is racially biased. It is. But I mean, but but here's a, here's here's the greater yeah. sort of like an insidious hidden problem. White people are also victims of bad police work. Yeah, we but, don't got no money. But so but here <laughs> but but the but the issue that I have yeah. is that they are so gung ho on I, I, it's 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 unfair for me to say they. Some white people in our country My are so so gung ho about seeing licking. bad things happen to black people oh, that they're the willing to put up with injustice happening to people that look like them as well. Some of people lick boots so hard that they don't care anyone gets. At least the boots are shiny, right? <laughs> or, or are they streak? Are they streaked up from all the saliva? Oh. And the enzymes that, that, that came off their <laughs> enzymes tongue. Enzymes and shit. <laughs> uh, or, or, you know, uh, I forget what, what we were talking about uh, in the last show. The, the components of, of the blood that they were using. <laughs> they were oh, using to make the, the, blick, the bricks. Oh, the space oh, the space blood? Oh, the HSA. Yeah, the, yeah, the HSA, you, know, uh, you know. you know, Maybe there was a little bit of HSA in there somewhere, you know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, so... so so there you have it. That's the politics as usual. There's a pretty much a gun battle happening between landlords and tenants in Maine right now. <laughs> I mean, uh, but uh, but 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 uh, you know, so, w one of the sides brought a doorknob to a gunfight. Unfortunately. Yeah. So. So, so is, uh, you already know the outcome of that. So there you have it. That's um, unfortunately that's politics as usual until some magical thing happens with rent in this country. Um, so that's, that's that's Twitter. Not gonna happen. Yeah. So Black Power Magic Hours on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, and Dr. Evil Genius. He's talking shit on Discord, Twitch, um, all those platforms where you can like watch people talk and and talk to them. Um, not like normal TV, which sucks. So that's Black Power Magic Hour. <laughs>